Uh, good morning again, everybody. Happy Friday. I'm so excited this morning. We have a fantastic guest reader. We have the superintendent of the Liberty High School District, Eric Volta, who's going to read one of his favorite books. And so I'm going to pass the camera over there and get him set up. Okay. Hello, everyone. I would love to share one of my favorite children's books with you. Uh, this is a book that we read to every single one of our children growing up. Uh, the title of this book is Giraffes Can't Dance by Giles Andrea and Guy Parker Reese. Uh, the illustrations in this book are beautiful and magnificent, so I'll, I'll pause between the pages for you. Gerald was a tall giraffe whose neck was long and slim, but his knees were awfully bandy and his legs were rather thin. He was very good at standing still and munching shoots off trees, but when he tried to run around, he buckled at the knees. Now every year in Africa they hold a jungle dance where every single animal turns up to skip and prance. And this year when the day arrived, poor Gerald felt so sad because when it came to dancing, he was really very bad. The warthogs started waltzing, and the rhinos rock and rolled. The lions danced a tango, which was elegant and bold. The chimps all did a cha-cha with a very Latin feel, and eight baboons then teamed up for a splendid Scottish reel. Gerald swallowed bravely as he walked towards the floor, but the lions saw him coming and they soon began to roar. Hey, look at clumsy Gerald, the animals all laughed. Giraffes can't dance, you silly fool. Oh, Gerald, don't be daft. Gerald simply froze up. He was rooted to the spot. They're right, he thought. I'm useless. Oh, I feel like such a clock. So he crept off from the dance floor and he started walking home. He never felt so sad before. So sad, so alone. Then he found a little clearing and he looked up at the sky. The moon can be so beautiful, he whispered with a sigh. Excuse me, coughed a cricket who'd seen Gerald earlier on. But sometimes, when you're different, you just need a different song. Listen to the swaying grass, and listen to the trees. To me, the sweetest music is those branches in the breeze. So imagine that lovely moon is playing just for you. Everything makes music if you really want it to. With that, the cricket smiled and picked up his violin. Then Gerald felt his body do the most amazing thing. His hooves 
had started shuffling, making circles on the ground. His neck was gently swaying, and his tail was swishing round. He threw his arms out sideways, and he swung them every year. Then he did a backward somersault and leapt up in the air. Gerald, Gerald felt so wonderful, his mouth was open wide. I'm dancing. Yes, I'm dancing. I am dancing, Gerald cried. Then one by one, each animal who'd been there at the dance arrived while Gerald boogied and watched him quite entranced. They shouted, it's a miracle. We must be in a dream. Gerald's the best dancer that we have ever seen. How is it you can dance like that? Please, Gerald, tell us how. But Gerald simply twizzled round and finished with a bow. Then he raised his head up at the moon and stars above. We all can dance, he said, when we find the music that we love. Thank you for listening. This is a very special book to me and my family. And again, thank you for allowing me to share it. What a great treat to have Mr. Volta here today. Thanks to him for coming in. Have a fantastic Friday. And we'll see you back here Monday at 9 a.m. for the next chapter in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone.